Praise God, we come to you in the love and presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are blessed that we could be together to study the scriptures and uh, draw some insights and truths about what it says in our present situation and circumstances. Have you ever heard about the kindergarten story of Noah and the ark? You might have had. So f I heard about a person who said, I never thought that a kindergarten story like Noah and his ark could answer many of my life questions, especially in the circumstances that I am in. And I hope and pray that today, from the study of Noah and his ark, from the book of Genesis in the Bible, we will be able to draw some truths and insights about how Noah and his family was able to survive the great floods, the great judgment of God upon the earth during their time. Because as you can see nowadays, we live in a world where we can see that the world is in peril, the world is in danger, the world is in a deluge, and this deluge of uh, suffering, this deluge of pain, deluge means wave, great waves or great floods of hunger, great floods of misery, great deluge of joblessness, great floods of bankruptcy, great floods of pain and suffering in this world is like during the times of Noah. And I pray that today we will be able to draw some uh, special lesson, lessons upon uh, the life of Noah and his family. So what was the condition during the time of Noah? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, 11, and 12, the Lord said, How great is the wickedness of the human race! It had become on the earth that every inclination of the thoughts of the human's heart was only evil all the time. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Amen. The Bible describes that during the time of Noah, the whole of humanity, the, all, the whole of human race has been great in its wickedness. It was a corrupt world. It was a corrupt humanity. And uh, this wickedness was the one that prompted God to let his judgment be executed upon the earth. There was corruption in the race. There was violence. There was idolatrous worship. There was an increase in the accumulation of knowledge. There were dangerous times and perilous times just like our days in today. So makikita po natin sa Luke 17, 26, 30. This is a parallel verse. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. That is also stated in Matthew 24, 37 to 39. Also in 1 John 5, 19, it says, The whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. That was the condition during the great flood. And so God sent the floods as, a God's, as God's judgment to the earth. And uh, we can see that God often uses nature to execute his judgment because he wants to show that he is sovereign over his creation. The flood is also a symbol of cleansing. God wanted to cleanse the earth. God wanted to clean the earth of its sin. So he used water as his way of judgment. 
and uh, he used the great flood to let the people know, to let the whole world know that he is, you know, willing to begin anew. He is willing to begin a fresh start with humanity. And before he can do that, before God can do that, he has to go through the process of cleansing for it. And so God judges the earth. God judges sin. So people say God is so gracious. He is so full of love that he can never afford to execute judgment, to execute uh, this kind of uh, judgment unto the earth. But we can see from the story of Noah in the book of Genesis chapter 6 that God judges the earth. Genesis 6, 3 says, Then the Lord said, My spirit will no longer put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh, so in the future their normal lifespan will not be more than 120 years. So we can see here that God can no longer put up with the wickedness of man. God is a gracious, loving God, but he is also a God of judgment and righteousness. And so he executes his judgment upon the wickedness of man. And that is what happened in the days of Noah. And uh, you can see that in the present day, it is the same events. It is the same circumstances and predicament that we are in. Men are given to drunkenness. Men are given to marriage. And it is, man has gone through what the Bible and the scripture uh, allows, and that is marriage between man and a woman. Today, marriage has been given to men and men, and women and women, and that is an abominable act in the sight of God. And uh, so in the last days, the same judgment will be executed upon the earth, but it will no longer be by floods or by water, but by fire. Second Peter chapter 3, 10 to 11. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The elements of the earth will be destroyed by fire in the last days. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people you ought to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Now, remember, God executes judgment, but he doesn't just execute it without giving warning to his people. During the time of Noah, God commanded Noah to build an ark so that he can save his family. Because among all the peoples of the earth, only Noah was found righteous by God. And his righteousness and his faith in God was rewarded when God told him to build an ark so that he could be saved, he and his family. At the same time, Noah did his part, giving warning to all the people. Because when Noah was building the ark so that his family could be spared from judgment, Noah and his family built the ark in the midst of a hot summer weather. There is no sign of nimbus clouds or rain clouds in the sky. There was no raindrop. But God said, build me an ark. Hebrews 11.7 says, by faith... Noah, being warned by God about the things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. See, Noah's faith was credited to him as righteousness, because when Noah was building the ark, it could not have been easy because, as I said, people were given to doing sinful acts, sinful things, and they were enjoying it. And it was only Noah and his family which was preserved from this, you know, wicked generation. And in the midst of this wickedness, God commanded Noah to build the ark. And 
As I said, it must not have been easy because he must have been ridiculed. That's number one. Number two, he must have been insulted. And number three, he must have been thought to be crazy because he was doing something out of the ordinary. What is he doing building a big, huge ark in the middle of a hot summer weather? But nonetheless, by faith, Noah built the ark with all its specifications in terms of size, shape, length, width, height, you know, it was very, very specific. Noah built it according to God's plan. Noah built it according to God's design. So as Noah built the ark, he tried to warn the people as well. But we will see that nobody listened to Noah. They laughed at him. They thought of him as crazy. When he was telling people to repent, calling people to repent from their sins and uh, turn back to God, people were call calling him crazy. People were calling him weird because he was doing something that is out of the ordinary. But just the same, it doesn't change the fact that the judgment of God is coming. And sometimes people do not listen to us. People ridicule us. People laugh at us. They insult us. They become skeptic to what we are telling about about God's incoming and impending judgment, about God's impending punishment for the wickedness of humanity. They would not listen, but it would not change the fact that God's judgment is coming because God is a God of love and forgiveness, but He is also a God of righteousness and justice. So, what was the result of Noah's putting his faith in God? Because, you know, it could have been something that is very easy to question. Like, why? Why are you telling me to build something like this? You know, I would be uh, a subject of uh, torment and insult and ridicule of these people because I'm doing something that is out of the ordinary. But by faith, Noah built the ark. He believed what God said. It was God who planned it. It was God who designed it. And it was only Noah's job to execute it, you know, to, to build it, you know, in the midst of those circumstances. So most of the times in our lives, we go through this kind of situation when uh, God tells us to do something. And when God tells us to do something that we do not understand, the first thing that we do is to question the wisdom of God, to be skeptical about the will of God. And Noah could have done the same, but he did not. Noah believed God, and Noah obeyed God. And that is what is God asking of us in the midst of, of this impending disaster that the world is being confronted with, God wants us to believe in Him and to put our faith in Him. Because even before this pandemic has come, God has also already designed a plan of escape. You know, the pandemic is like what Noah had gone through in his day. We are as I said, in a deluge of pain and misery and uncertainty. We are in a deluge of suffering and hunger and bankruptcy and loss because of our loved ones. And it is the same experience that we are going through right now. The question is, how can we have an exit plan? How can we have an escape? How can we survive? How can we keep ourselves afloat in the midst of this deluge of suffering that the world is in? 
we, as I said, can learn truths from the story of Noah. In the midst of this suffering that we are in, in the midst of these floods of misery that we are in, we can keep ourselves afloat if we will believe in God and put our faith in Him. Noah built the ark despite the fact that he does not see any nimbus clouds in the sky. Noah built the ark specifically following the design of God despite the fact that he had not seen any drop of rain. But still he obeyed God. In the same manner that God is wanting us to build our arks. What is the ark? The ark is the symbol of God's salvation. It is the place where Noah ran to, together with his family and the animals two by two, when the great flood came in, when the judgment of God came in. Noah and his family were the only ones who were able to save themselves. Everyone in the face of the earth during Noah's time was eliminated. They perished because of their sins. But Noah and his family were the only ones who were put safely in the ark of God. So the ark is the symbol of God's salvation. The ark is a place of safety and security. The ark is a place of protection from the storm, from the raging waters outside. Everyone who entered the ark was saved. Noah and his family and all the animals. In the same manner that we are in, in the floods, in the waves that is raging outside us because of this pandemic, it is causing a lot of troubles. And how can we survive this pandemic? How can we survive this disaster that we, that we are being confronted with? How can we be put into a place of safety and security? How can we be protected? Because, you know, there are times when we cannot avoid going out. We cannot lock ourselves, you know, forever in our homes. But we have to, at least, there's, there should be a semblance of normalcy in our lives by going to our jobs, going to our work and businesses. And how can we be assured that we are safe whenever we go out of our homes? The ark is a symbol of God's protection. And it is the same manner that God wants us to go into the ark. When the floods came, God specifically said to Noah, go into the ark. Go into the ark. And Noah obeyed. You know, Noah could have chosen to just stay outside, you know, and uh, doubt God. Like, what am I going to do there? You know, am I going to leave my family, my relatives, my uh, home, my uh, nation and go into the ark? But Noah believed God. He went into the ark together with his family. And so he was safe. He was secured. He was protected. He did not die. Do you want to come out alive out of this pandemic? Do you want to come out alive out of these disasters that is ravaging the earth? Be like Noah. Believe God. Listen to the voice of God. Obey God. When Noah was building the ark, it was an act of faith. It was something that God told him and he could have easily disobeyed, but he did not. He acted in faith. And so it was credited to him as righteousness, Hebrews 11 says. It is, you know, likewise in our lives when the floods come to us, the floods or deluge of... Uh, of this pandemic, whatever the effects of this pandemic to us, maybe it's in our businesses, maybe it's in our jobs, maybe in, it's in our mental capacity or emotional capacity. Everyone has been affected by this pandemic. 
It's like a flood, a deluge that is ravaging and, uh, you know, raging through us. And uh, remember when the floods came, when God uh, executed the judgment, it is not by some magic wand that Noah disappeared. He, he remained in this world. He remained in this wicked world. But in the midst of this wickedness around him, Noah kept himself pure and righteous in the sight of God. And that's what kept him safe. That's what kept him alive. His righteousness in the midst of wickedness. Because it is very easy for us to be pressured by the wickedness around us. We give in. We compromise our faith because the temptation is so great. But Noah kept his integrity. Noah kept his righteousness by preserving his, his holiness and his purity in the sight of God. And God has seen that. So likewise, you know, when, when the, the earth is going through suffering, when the earth is going through a disastrous you know, circumstance and moment, God will not take us away. You know, God will not take us away. But, you know, in the midst of these uh, disasters that are happening, God will keep us there. But the Lord has promised his protection, his security. You know, Noah did not vanish from the earth. He was not taken out of this earth. But he was kept in this earth during the floods. But when the flood itself came, God saved him. God put him in a place of safety and security. And that was the ark. So likewise in our lives, when we feel like we are in danger, when we feel like we, we are being flooded with all the battles, with all the miseries, with all the uncertainties with all the things that are raging in our lives i don't know what personally you are going through right now but i know you are going through a rough situation you're going through rough times and it is not only you but everyone is going through rough times because of what we are uh, undergoing through but god promises safety and security through the ark that ark is the faith that is built up in our hearts, just like Noah. When God told him to do something, Noah, in faith, obeyed God. Even though he did not understand, maybe. Because, you know, the design of the ark was so huge. The specification was so... Um, certain, the shape, the size, the width, the height, you know, it was God's plan. And uh, it was God's plan for safety and protection. So, sa buhay po natin magkaminsan may pinapagawa ang Diyos, hindi natin maintindihan, hindi natin maunawaan. Pero hindi po sapat iyon para hindi natin sundin. Sapagkat kung tayo lang po ay susunod, if we only believe, obey, and execute the plan of God, not question it, not uh, be skeptical about it, not fail to put our trust in His promises, in God's promises, then we might find safety. We will find safety. And that is actually what Noah experienced. When God told him, Noah, you enter the ark, Noah entered the ark. And, uh, you know, as I said, he could have stayed outside and died just like everybody else. But in Genesis 7, 1, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household. For I have sinned that you are righteous before me in this generation. Praise God. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean. So we can see here that, you know, in John 10, 9, Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Nowadays, we have no ark, literal ark, a physical ark that we can enter into. But 
Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Remember when God gave a specific instruction to Noah to build the ark? God said, build, build a door, you know, create a door. And there is that one single door going into the ark. There is no other door. And that is a foretelling of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do in our time, in our generation. Because we don't have the door of the ark to enter into now to feel safe and secure in the midst of these dangers that we are encountering. But Jesus Christ is the door. He is the door of life. John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So if you want to come out alive out of this pandemic, if you want to come out alive out of these perils and dangers that the world is plunged into, Jesus Christ is the salvation. Jesus Christ is the door of salvation. Jesus Christ is the ark of our times. If we enter into him, we will be saved. John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to come out alive, out of these dangerous times, out of these perilous times, out of this pandemic that we are going through? Do you want to come out alive, just like Noah? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be secured? Do you want to be protected? Jesus Christ is the Ark of the New Testament. Whoever comes into Him, Whoever takes refuge in him will be saved. Whoever wants to go into, you know, that ark will be afloat, you know. It was only Noah and his family, nobody else, who was saved during the great flood. And what will keep you afloat, likewise, in these present times, when we are also experiencing raging waves of this pandemic, where we are also experiencing a great deluge, great floods of losses, you know, losing your loved ones due to this mysterious virus, a great deluge of suffering because of joblessness, of bankruptcy, a great deluge of misery because of this pandemic. How do you keep yourself afloat and not drown in misery and not drown in bankruptcy and not drown in sorrow because of a great loss, maybe of a loved one? How do you keep yourself afloat? enter into the ark. It is the ark that will keep you safe. It is the ark, just like in the days of Noah, that will keep you afloat and alive and secured and protected. It is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Whoever comes into this door, the Lord says, he will be saved. And Jesus is that door. Jesus Christ is that door. There is no other door. So if you put your faith in God, you will be kept alive. You will be kept afloat. You will be kept safe. In the last days, iniquity shall abound, the Bible says. And because of this iniquity, the love of many will wax cold. Matthew 24, verse 12. But, Psalm 910 verse says, I put my trust in you, my God, whose word I praise. In God I put my trust. I shall not be afraid. So if there is anything that makes you afraid, that makes you scared, that makes you feel like you are drowning, that makes you feel that you are going to die, 
because of this pandemic that is ravaging the world. You can be safe in the presence of God. You can be safe in the ark of God. Put your faith in God. Because I tell you, beloved, all that is happening right now is not going to get better. The bad news is it is going to get worse. One year after the pandemic, we could have expected that things will be better. But we can see that one year after the pandemic, we have gone full circle. We're back to square one. And as many people have observed, things have gotten worse. You know, we have come to an unprecedented number of infections a day. We had come to an unprecedented number of deaths a day. And as I said, it was not easy in this last few days because people that I know have been ravaged by this virus. They have been gone just like that. And it is very painful. It is miserable. It is sorrowful, you know, losing somebody you love to this virus. So what are we going to do? Number one, do not miss the boat. Noah gave warnings. God does not execute judgment without giving warning. And this is a warning for you. This message is a warning for you that Noah was preserved because he remained righteous. So if there is no righteousness in our lives, we are living in sin and iniquity, just like the other people in the, in the days of Noah. Now this is the right time for us to repent of our sins and go back to God. This is the right time for us, the right time for us to repent of our iniquities and turn back to God, just like the warning of Noah. Number two, let us plan ahead. And that plan, that uh, plan should be according to the plan of God. Because, you know, we could have our own plans in our lives. But apart from the plan of God, these plans will fail. All of these plans will fail. God will execute judgment during the time of Noah. But he has a way of escape when he designed the ark to be built by Noah. The ark was a way of escape from judgment. The ark was a way of escape from the punishment that is coming to the earth. And Noah did his part. He gave warning to, this, to, his, to the people around him. He told them to live all their iniquities because they are given to drunkenness and alcohol. They were given to marriages and maybe these marriages are, you know, what are we are having today, these kinds of, you know, unacceptable marriages in the sight of God. They were given to, to violence and uh, idolatrous worship. They were given to all of these iniquities. And likewise in our day, we are doing all of these things, just like in the days of Noah. So when we are given that warning, let us heed the warning. Let us not harden our hearts, but let us surrender our lives to God before it is too late. And remember, you have to go into the ark. Go into the ark, which means you have to go into the presence of God by faith. You have to receive and accept Jesus Christ in our hearts because he is the door. If there is something that we will enter into, it is the door of life, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, then we can be afloat. We can find ourselves alive and escape this kind of disaster that is ravaging the world. After the judgment was put upon this earth, Noah and his uh, family were kept safe in the boat. And after that, for 40 days and 40 nights, 40 nights, it rained so hard that all of the earth was inundated by this great flood. And after the great flood, Noah was kept safe and God's, you know, 
presented to him, demonstrated to him that he will never judge the earth anymore with floods by showing him a rainbow after coming off the, the, the ark. But yes, it will not be floods or waters as we have read in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, but it will be by fire. God will judge the earth th th by fire. And that is even scarier. That is even more fearful. And I hope and pray that today we have learned the very basic message that God wants us to take away from the story of Noah. That there is no salvation. There is no salvation. Salvation is found in no one else but in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are putting your faith and trust in religion, in your selfish uh, ambitions, if you are putting your faith and trust in your own strength and abilities, all of this will come to nothing because there is no salvation. Salvation is found in no one else but in the Lord alone, in Jesus Christ alone. So if you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Lord God and Savior, and you are full of fear in your heart, full of uncertainty, if you are going to make out of this alive, if you are going to make out of this pandemic alive, just like in the days of Noah, you enter the ark. It is the place of security. It is the place of protection. It is the place of safety. It is the place of salvation. It is the place of blessing. And Jesus Christ is the ark in our lives. Let us put our faith in Him. Let us put our trust in Him. It is our faith in the Lord that will keep us alive, that will keep us afloat in the midst of this raging pandemic and disaster that is besetting the world. Today, I would like to invite you into a simple prayer of acceptance. You don't need to be a part of a religion. You don't need to be a part of an organization or denomination to accept salvation. You have to be humble in the sight of God, accept your iniquities, just like those people in the days of Noah. They just did not heed to the warning of Noah, but Noah heeded to the call of God and he remained righteous in the sight of God. That's why he experienced the salvation of God. And likewise, in our days and in our time, we can experience the salvation of God if we repent of our sins, humble ourselves before Him, and accept Him, Jesus Christ, as our Lord God and Savior. And so, may I invite you to pray this simple prayer of repentance and acceptance so that you can be assured in your heart that salvation will come upon your life. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I have sinned against thee. I have practiced iniquities in my life. I have disobeyed thee. And so today, forgive me. Cleanse me from all my sins. Forgive me from all my iniquities. And today, I surrender my life to you. I entrust my life to you. I want to enter into the door of life. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord, God, and Savior. I want to enter into that ark and experience the salvation of God. Today, Lord Jesus, I invite you, come into my life. Be my Lord, be my God, be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, praise God. You have not become a member of a, of a religion. You have not become a member of a denomination. But you have become a member of the family of God. Your name is written in the book of life in heaven. And salvation has come upon you. Salvation has come upon your life. Because the Bible says, He who has the Son has life. The Son of God is Jesus Christ. And you have accepted Him in your life today. And you have eternal life. He who does not have the Son does not have the life. So, I would like, before I end this, this uh, message, I would like to pray for you. Whatever is your need from God. Are you suffering? Are you flooded with all the negative 
emotions of this world, sorrow, pain, misery, doubt, unbelief, fear, uncertainties? Are you flooded with all those uh, kinds of uh, struggles and uh, problems? I don't know what specific problems do you have. Maybe uh, mental torture. You are very stressed of what you are going through. Maybe you have a physical uh, inability to cope with the things that you are going through. Emotional inability to cope with the things that you are going through. Maybe you are physically sick. Are you sick in your body? Whatever is your need from God, God is willing and able to touch you and answer you and save you. Just like what he did with Noah. Because Noah, was, his faith was credited unto him as righteousness. And that's why God rewarded him by putting him in a place of security, in a place of safety, in a place of protection. And that is inside the ark. And today, whatever you need from God, sickness, mental anxiety, whatever it is that you need from God, you know, fixing of any broken relationship, whatever it is that you need from God, just raise your both hands to God and say, God, Help me, save me, and answer my problems. And so right now, I pray that the Lord will touch you. You know, you who are physically sick, the Lord is just touching you right now, creating a miracle in your life, fixing the abnormalities in your body, taking away the pain, taking away the physical abnormalities in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will just touch you miraculously right now. Receive the very presence of God, the mighty power of God, healing you, touching you, lifting you up, restoring you. Just receive right now the very presence of God in Jesus' name. Yes, no harm shall beset you, just like what he did with Noah and his family. You are in a place of safety. You are in a place of security. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be uncertain and skeptical. Put your faith in God. Put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible with God. And so today, the Lord is just working a miraculous wonder in your life. The Lord is just touching you. Just receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Right now, the Lord is just healing cancer of the blood yes there is leukemia that is being healed by the lord right now even right now the lord is just touching those who have bone problems bone density problems i don't know what is the name of that but it's all about bone bone diseases is being healed by the lord in jesus name even kidney Kidney failures in the name of Jesus is being healed by God. God is just restoring to health your kidney. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. By His creative power, God spoke, let there be light and, let there, and there was light. By His grace and mercy, God said to Noah, go into the ark. And Noah was kept safe. And secured in the ark in the same manner that God is doing it to you right now. God is just doing it to you right now. God is putting you into a place of security, into a place of, uh, of uh, protection. God is putting you into a place of safety that you no longer have to be afraid. God will bless you despite this pandemic. God is... God's protection is upon His people. God's protection is upon His children in the midst of this pandemic. And so just receive it now in Jesus' name. The protection of God is upon you, upon you and your family. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking away that fear and skepticism and uncertainty in your heart. And today God has put that big faith, huge faith and trust in your heart that you will be kept afloat, that you will be kept alive, and nothing can harm you, 
in the midst of this disaster that is besetting the world. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that everyone who is watching right now is being touched by you. Everyone who is watching right now is being held by you in your loving hands. Lord, whoever needs comfort, whoever needs strength, whoever needs peace, whoever needs healing, Father, in the name of Jesus, just let it flow in Jesus' mighty name, the Son of the living God. Oh, thank you, Lord, that there is safety and provision and security in your presence. That whatever we are going through right now, you have promised to be there with us. You have promised to save us. You have promised to keep us safe. And so right now, let that assurance be upon each and every one who is watching right now in Jesus' name. And whatever it is that I have not mentioned, whatever it is that I have not said, you know, in my word of knowledge, God knows you and God is willing to touch you and answer your prayers. And so receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that in the midst of what we are going through, you have promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And it is only you alone whom we are going to praise and thank and worship in our lives. Today, God has done something great. God has done something miraculous. God has assured you with His presence and that He will always keep you safe in His love and care. So, once again, we would like to uh, invite you to watch our live streaming every Sunday because we are not yet permitted to, assemble or to gather as a church. We are still limited in our uh, gathering as a church. So on sun during Sundays, we still have our uh, Sunday worship in the in the morning at 10 a.m. and in the afternoon at 3 p.m. And uh, we pray that uh, you will continue to be blessed by the timely and relevant messages of God. And if you are being touched by God, if you are being touched by the Lord. To bless this ministry through your generous giving, you are very most welcome. You can uh, go into the comment section or you can go into our uh, KOJF or Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship homepage and uh, we will be able to give you ways and means by which you can give because there are many digital, uh, technologically uh, uh, advanced ways to give in this pandemic and uh, you are very most welcome if you want to bless this ministry because this ministry has been mandated by God to advance the gospel in the last days this ministry has been mandated by God to save lives to bless lives and to be able to do great and wonderful things for the glory of God in the last days. And we are just privileged and honored to be part of that plan. And so once again, we thank you for keeping us company. We thank you for giving us your time. And I pray that you have been blessed by the Lord and we will see you again the next time that we have this kind of message. So to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to Him, be the glory alone.